Hi, my name is Atafa Mehrabi. I'm a PhD student at Duke University. Welcome to our paper presentation. Sparse matrix multiplication is integral to many applications in different domains. However, sparsity complicates achieving high performance. Several data formats and computational kernels have been proposed. Several proposed optimizations and diverse sparsity patterns make choosing the right option quite challenging. In this talk, first we understand sources of inefficiency for SPMM on GPU platforms, then we will propose simple data transformations for a common sparse data structure, and we will present a smart mechanism that can predict the right data transformation based on the sparsity attributes. Starting with background. Compressed sparse row format is a common sparse data structure. CSR uses three one-dimensional arrays to specify location and value of non-zero elements in a sparse matrix. For array row IDX, it has M plus one entries for a matrix with M rows, starting with initial value of zero, each entry at ith location of this array, shows the total number of non-zeros in first i rows of the sparse matrix. So as we go through the rows, we count the number of non-zeros so far and add it to the new entry. Call IDX and val store column and value for all the non-zeros in order of their occurrence across rows. The next component is computational kernel. SPMM is the operation of multiplying a sparse matrix with a dense matrix. One common approach to improve SPMM's performance is tiling. See, stationary is a simple common kernel where tiles of C are kept in shared memory. Horizontal tiles of A are multiplied with the same vertical strip from B to generate tiles of C. This approach is common as it increases data locality on the dense matrix B with larger memory footprint compared to A. Now let's see how this kernel maps to a GPU. Each kernel runs on one SM on GPU, which is composed of multiple blocks, each with several parallel threads running the same instruction on different data. Each block is organized in groups of fixed number of threads, 32, and each group is called a warp. For mapping C stationary with CSR and GPU, each strip of B will be assigned to one block. Warps within that block will visit every row of the sparse matrix to complete multiplications. Because number of warps can be smaller than number of rows, assignment of rows to warps repeats periodically until all rows are assigned to a warp. So we see warp zero, and again, we may see warp zero, warp zero so far. And then another strip of B goes to another block. Let's see what are the performance factors in this operation. Starting by load distribution, 32 threads of each warp perform multiplication for non-zero elements of rows assigned to them. Because there are only 32 threads within each warp, then the number of multiplications each warp has to do depends on the number of non-zeros. Maximum number of iterations on threads defines each warp's computational load. We call it warp load metric, which is formulated in this slide. For instance, in this matrix, First row needs five threads, which means warp load equals one on warp zero. Only five out of 32 parallel threads are busy. Similarly, the next row that goes to warp zero requires one more iteration. But rows assigned to warp one have more non-zero elements leading to larger warp load three, and then the next one, two. A block cannot release its warps until all warps are done. This load variation among warps wastes parallel units. That being said, number of non-zeros and their distribution across rows determines load balance, which impacts performance. Second factor, data locality. For multiplying each non-zero, the corresponding element from B's column must be fetched. Also, for a cache line of 128 bytes, 32 consecutive elements from B's column belong to the same cache line if stored in column major order. Thus, taking these cross signs as the non-zeros 
and the dashed lines are setting hypothetical boundaries for 32 consecutive elements. When we assign rows to warps, for first row that goes to warp zero, all three non-zeros request elements from a single cache line, cache line zero. Similarly, next row for warp zero again requests the same cache line. However, rows that are assigned to warp one need elements that are far from each other and end up fetching different cache lines, three for this row and another one for this row. So even though warp one is processing fewer number of non-zeros, it's fetching more cache lines. Therefore, rather than number of non-zeros, it's the location of non-zeros within rows that determines data reuse. Based on these factors, we propose row permutations. Load balancing permutations reorder rows to reduce load variation. In this example that we saw earlier, if we had assigned the last row to warp zero instead of warp one, then we could reduce the number of wasted cycles to one instead of three. In this category, we propose three permutation policies, plain sort that reorders simply based on warp load metric, flip sort that does the same thing, but it reverses the order of assigning sorted rows to warps in every round to make sure that the largest load in each round is not assigned to warp zero, an LPT sort that uses longest processing time algorithm and takes a greedy approach to assign each row to the warp with the smallest total warp load so far. Second category, cache aware row permutations, reorder rows to increase data use. To do so, first we create a bit mass to determine each row's cache access pattern. Every 32 consecutive elements are mapped to a single bit. If at least one non-zero element exists, then the corresponding bit equals one, showing that this cache line will be fetched from B. Locality is improved if fewer transitions from zero to one or one to zero occur between rows that are executed close to each other in time. So we measure similarity by using Hamming distance between bit mask vectors. In this case, rows assigned to warp zero are showing equal access pattern to the same cache line and the distance is zero. While the other pair assigned to warp one are quite different and showing larger distance. Smaller distance shows higher similarity and higher chance for reusing cache blocks or not requesting non-cache blocks. We propose two permutation policies under this category. Warp aware permutation minimizes distance between rows assigned to the same warp, which are 32 rows away from each other in the sparse matrix, and CTA aware sort that minimizes distance between rows that are assigned to warps within a block, which are consecutive rows in the matrix. And finally, Hybrid policies combine benefits from both permutation categories. They start by one approach and break ties with a secondary approach. For instance, when multiple rows are equal in terms of load balance, data locality principles are used to guide the rest of the sort. Let's see SVMM's performance under these permutations. We used 1688 highly sparse matrices from Sparse Suite and evaluate these permutations on two NVIDIA GPUs listed here. We used See stationary kernel with plain CSR with its original CSR ordering as the baseline and measure speedups after each permutation. Looking at LPT sort result as a representative from load balancing permutations, on Y axis we have speed up and on X axis number of rows for data sets. For many matrices, SBMM performs better after LPT sort and results show speed ups up to 3.5 times. However, there are some matrices with slowdowns. Looking at the population, around 17% of matrices experience a slowdown after LPT sort. Looking at the same experiment for representatives from cache aware permutations, 
showed that same trends exist within other permutation policies from cash affair permutation category. So how is that possible? It happens when improving one performance factor harms the other one. For instance, the cash access pattern can become worse when rows are reordered to improve load balance. Depending on how strong each factor is, a permutation may or may not lead to speed up. This pie chart shows what percentage of our matrices prefer each of the several permutations we propose. It confirms that no single permutation fits all matrices because of their different sparsity patterns. So what is the right choice for each matrix? In this analysis, we show that given a particular number of permutations, if we could choose the best among them for each matrix, what is the average speed up that we can achieve? For example, if we only have one choice other than plain CSR, for all matrices to pick from, one of the hybrid versions provides the highest average gain, which is the speed up of 1.1. Repeating that by increasing the number of available permutations, we see that by increasing the number of permutations to choose the best from, the achievable Oracle speed up grows and reaches 1.4 times. While Oracle gains are significant, trying many different policies to find what's best for each matrix is not practical. So this brings us to our next contribution. It's desired to look at the sparse matrix and know what is the right choice without actually running all the policies. So what we propose is a simple predictor that is a small, fully connected neural network that can accomplish this goal based on the sparsity patterns. We introduce the sparsity features, which are numerical attributes extracted from CSR to describe sparsity patterns. The goal of these features is to provide sufficient information for the predictor model to predict the right permutation policy. To do so, they abstract the interactions between parallel workers and GPU memory system. For instance, if features show that the matrix suffers significantly from load variance, load balancing permutations might be good candidates. Our proposed features come in three different categories, matrix features that summarize gen generic information about matrix like size, density, et cetera, load balancing features that are stats driven from warp load metric on, across different warps, and locality features that summarize access patterns by numerical attributes such as number of cache lines requested, and so on. We feed our normalized features to a fully connected network that has two hidden layers. This network outputs multiple regression values, which are predicted execution times for SPMM under multiple different permutation policies, in this figure, we show four. We aim to know which permutation works better for a matrix based on the described input features. And the final stage is classification, selecting the permutation with lowest predicted execution time as the best predicted policy based on the features. To see how accurate this model can perform, We compare performance loss for each matrix by comparing our model's prediction to Oracle choices. This histogram shows that over 86% of matrices predicted permutations gain is within 4% of their Oracle gain, and over 90% of matrices perform within 10% of their Oracle gain. So on average, our predictor incurs only 3.8% performance loss compared to Oracle. So in summary, none of the permutations alone were sufficient enough for all matrices, but the combinatorial choice among multiple policies can lead to significant gains if selected properly. The predictor that we propose simplifies this challenging choice using an easy, smart, and highly accurate model. Thank you for your attention.